There's not many things I regret more in life than buying a Fuji X-H2S. One was renting a Thailand apartment that faced the sun year-round, all day long. It was an oven mitt. Today we go over the reasons why I hate myself and this camera. Even though this is a flattering image. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Fuji X-H2S. Thank you Aiden Camera for selling it to me more than a YouTuber should be sold things for. Let's all go to Aiden Camera tonight. And thank you Camera Canada for the collaboration sending me this Fuji lens. Who would like to see a UFC match with Aiden Camera vs. Camera Canada? I wouldn't mind seeing it. So we're in F-Log 2, 6.2K. I just wanted to play around with that. I probably won't even mess around with the aspect ratio, yes I will. People like zoom it, and then they're like, oh wow, look, I'm in an elevator. I can move it this much up and down. Wonderful mode. So I've been playing around with this camera for over a week. I've made many videos for my other channel and this one, comparisons. From what I can see, autofocus, much improved. If you're just doing YouTube or portrait style stuff, street videography, much improved, much better, not perfect. No, I made a recipe video the other day and as I turn to cut stuff, it was like pulsing and hunting quite a bit. Sony never did that. That's painful, so that hurts. But hot damn, it's a pretty magical camera. I love the colors, the dynamic range beats my Sony. I love it, love the thing, hate it as well because I bought it as a wildlife upgrade. Upgrade it was not. So I made some tweaks to the autofocus. I used a tiny little area box, like the size of that duck's eye, basically. And you can see it doesn't work. It just does not work. It hunts outside the box. That's the problem here. Most cameras have like a zone setting and you can change, okay, only look here for my eye. So if I'm out here, oh no doesn't do it. If there's distracting things outside of that box, it doesn't even look at them. So that would help, but it doesn't seem to do it. Now here's a moment. This duck looks down, jumps in this pond, and I'm like, okay, this is perfect. Can Fuji keep up with it? Right now, it seems like it's on the eye pretty good. Comes in, lost it for a split second, but it's in, but eh, eh. It's like constantly hunting in and out, but it kind of has it. If you don't have a trained eye, now it's gone. Now it's gone forever. For a second, like it was pretty good. I will show you moments where it's usable. For some reason, Fuji seems to have the best frog detect autofocus. It works for frogs most of the time, except when it doesn't. I got these dragonflies, I'm like, okay, this is a magical moment. Is that two of them? Are they mating right now and then flying and things happened and Fuji let it happen. Except this time. You ruined my life here, Fuj. I could have had the most magical moment. It was on it. Like, it put a rectangle around this whole thing. I was like, you're nailing a dragonfly mid-flight? I was so impressed as I was filming it. And then I get it back and it, it's not in. Like, only like half a second is in focus. He's dipping his ass in a lake. And you didn't let my audience witness it. That could have been so beautiful. An ass lake dipping. We missed it. You're over there now. I moved my green light and shifted the scene because you were about to click off, losing me money. Ah, that's good time. So I found a dragonfly. Easily the most magical moment of my life, and it only lasted two seconds. How come all my magical moments only last that long? That's a bitch. Oh, how do I stretch them out? Now here I thought I would challenge, we had a duck underwater, animal eye detect on, seemed to do okay, not bad, seems to grab you. Yeah. It worked for that scene, it's gone now, what's it focused on for any reason, I have no idea. But like I tried that a couple times and it just, here's the deal, sometimes you get it, most of the times you don't, and there's no reason to ever be in that mode. Animal eye detect, it's not even a thing. I'm gonna turn it off in menu, forget about it. 
I'm gonna take this thing out with manual focus again and maybe we can redevelop the love we had for Fuji. But it's painful. You know why I don't want to use it anymore? As my fingers get ready to click the most magical moment that could have been ours? What if you happen to see a rare as hell blue magic bird? A magical blue bird and you're in bird eye detect and you don't know what you're doing and you're like okay it is it's working it had a box on the screen so I was like yeah I couldn't tell I couldn't adjust the diopter of my viewfinder because I'm a moron I didn't realize it clicked out my friend discovered it he found it out in eight seconds flat when he touched the camera he's like oh you just pull it out and then turn it yeah, thanks buddy where were you when the manual was written did you see that moment a bee flew by. I don't know if that's a bee catcher bird. Magic bluebird bee catcher was about to terrorize a bee. That's magic. That's a rare sighting. It actually got the shot pretty good, even behind twigs. Why am I complaining so much? I'm an asshole. But as you can see in this sequence, like it's just a lot of in and out, in and out. We are in, no we're not. It's constantly back and forth, even though I have it in locked on locked on mode, ignore anything else, and the box is showing it doing that, but it just doesn't actually happen. This bird flew off into the mist, and he landed on a pose, and I was like, oh, there he is still. Okay, cool. And the animal, like, the box is right there on him. And I'm like, no, you're missing it. This could have been a great shot. It would have been if I was in manual focus. I could have just manually focused override, but I didn't want to. And so, like, it finally got him for a split second. That was the story of my life. And then this cyclist shows up. It was the funniest thing. He, he's like, he was wanting to get down this path, and I'm here looking at this bird, and he's like, he just goes by, and then he notices the blue magical bird fly off. And then he looks back, he's like, oh, sorry. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, no problem. It's just a, you know, blue magic mist bird never been seen before in the city. I just have to ask myself, what is my goal in life? What's my end game on the camera search? What are we even looking for anymore? I don't know. It's a great camera. I can't decide if I love it or really hate it and want to sell it immediately. I haven't even gotten my Zeiss lens in the mail yet. We're still waiting for that. I could sell everything. Look at that dynamic range. It's a bright ass window. More dynamic range than Sony A7S3. Are you believing that? I believe it. I've done the test. Hair light confirmed. I mean, seriously, look at that dynamic range. These are bright white lights, and I have no lights over here, and yet I'm pretty much exposed. Not like to a professional's eye, but why am I so close? I, I, I like doing this in 6K. Perhaps the most irritating design decision. Just imagine this. You have something lined up. Magical. You're in 4K 120p. Okay, here you are. I want to switch now into HD 240p and get a good shot. Oh, I just... How do I reach this dial here? This one right here. What hand is supposed to do that? This one? As I'm on the focus ring and the zoom ring, you want me to reach with what? double extended thumb, alien thumb, I don't have one. So even if that was a th that's awkward as shit. Gone is the bird. Gone is it. Like that's shaking, doing that. What I've been trying, which doesn't work with a hat, this is often what I'm doing. I go to switch it with the right hand. Ah, ah, ah. That's what you have to do. Oh. You gotta take it off. If it was right here like a normal person, I would just be like, uh, okay, switch, boom. Even on the X-T4, it was a double tap to get into the high frame rate. Boom, boom, bam. And this 6.2K file, by the way, impossible to play. Uh, that's going to be fun times to edit. Why didn't I double check that one before I started? That's hard. It was only 200 megabits. It's a 420. 
Yeah. You still get hornet magic if you go out and find one. You're still gonna get it. I have no idea if this is 4K 120p or 240p because the files won't tell me and DaVinci somehow ruined the one feature when you click on clip attributes. Gone. You used to be able to see the bitrate. They changed it somehow. I can tell nothing. So I have to go look. Oh, what file? 126. And then go look at the folder and then right click properties. Right click your mom. I saw a butterfly, she was flapping, flapping around. I was like, wow, look at that. That is something. I believe I took over manual focus here. Even then I seemed to miss it. It seems to be like going in and out, but that could just be my eyes losing sight. I'm having a seizure right now as recording the video. Now I'm pretty sure I would have got this next shot with the Sony, but due to my panic and the animal eye detect being on, I got a brief moment of it, somehow Fuji latched onto this, so thank you Fuji for saving my life and also ruining it at the same time. But I saw my first hummingbird of the season, a flapping wing bird. She came in, I was like, oh my god, is that a hummingbird? It was so fast, it was going to one flower and then the next, it was gone. My one moment, we saw it briefly though. I also got butterflies. Those are pretty fast too. It's a fast one. Look at that thing go. I don't know what that is. A moth? It's a spider with wings? I don't know, actually. I think my biggest problem is not only the animal eye detect being unreliable, it's also the IBIS jerks are still there, if not worse, than the X-T4. All you assholes who reviewed the X-H2S, you're all saying, oh, the IBIS jerks are all gone. It's so great, oh this is the best ever. Even though I'm seeing the jerks in your video, I was hoping, but like when I tested it in the store, it looked worse than the X-T4 and now confirmed 100 to 400, it's worse, jerky worse, worse jerks. But thankfully, I saw a magical blue heron. It was waiting for something, likely a fish. Or a bus, I don't know. He was magical. I did see him. The eye detect was pretty bullshit. I was like, you know what? I've had enough. I've had enough of your bullshit, Fuji. Let's just do what you do best and get the hair on. Get the shot of a lifetime. Although he never did dive in for a fish. So there was no lifetime shot. I did turn it into photo mode, took a picture. The animal eye detect seemed so much more reliable in photos than video, it wasn't even funny. It was just one green box on it. And I was like, okay, snapped a bunch. Some of them were in focus, I think. Can't guarantee it. It's something with the Fuji system, your shots just never seem to be perfectly sharp. That could be an X-Trans thing, and that's what gives it the beauty. But for wildlife, sometimes, you're just like, oh, what, is it in focus? No. So basically never use animal eye detect and think you're gonna get something back that you could actually share with the world. You're not going to. Maybe for an initial acquisition and then you switch immediately into animal manual focus. That's a thing. Then you might have something. This turtle looked up at me. I was like, I'm not gonna take a chance. This is a once in a lifetime speedy event that I need to be in 240 frames per second for. I don't know if I was or not, but it was cute. He was cute. All right, last shot of the day. I saw a dragonfly smile at me, and so I wanted to share it with you. I've never seen that before. I'm pretty sure he smiled. He's just chilling. I'm super close. Then he looked up and he smiled. Oh, that is cute. He does it again. You want to take my picture? Cheese. Okay, I'll go back to doing what I was doing, which is hanging out on a stick. You should try it sometime. So every day I debate the purchase. Should I sell it? I have to at least wait for the Zeiss lens and we test that. I almost want to just sell both X-T4 and this. Be done with you. But whatever. I, just, I feel like I do love it. The look of it. And eventually this could rival like a black magic with its dynamic range, the cinema look. 
you don't know that it couldn't, and it actually does have IBIS and autofocus. Can 100% count on them, like your drunk grandmother trying to drive you to the bank, but the cinema could be yours for a somewhat affordable price. It's not the cheapest they could have made it. I believe they're cutting costs somewhere and not passing on those savings to us, but I don't mind you. I don't mind you surviving this apocalyptic world. So, what do you think? Do you have an XH2S? What are the quirks? What am I missing? Is Animal Eye Detect reliable for you? I've never seen it being reliable. Only one guy, he was probably in manual focus. Yeah, I said it. I'm gonna leave. After you buy this camera through my affiliate links, you'll love it. Just like I do. Desk panning. I'll go. How's the 6K? Good.